what we're going to be going over here is cost volume profit analysis and we're going to be looking at some break-even points or some break-even quantities that we're going to have to sell for and this is where we're going to have to determine the x x stands for our units or our quantity here and that would be needed here for the targeted net income here before tax and net income here after tax okay but what we're going to do here is we're going to have to sell for our quantities here based then as a percentage of sales here we're going to try to solve for that break-even point here as a percentage of sales. So we're going to have our targeted net income here before tax and targeted net income here after tax. It's going to be stated as a percentage of sales here. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to solve this problem here and we're going to go through some formulas and equations here to make our calculations. But before we do that, let's go over here and look at our reference key that we're going to use here for our solution here. So P, that's going to equal the unit sales price. That's the uh, individual price here on a per unit basis. And we're going to be looking at just solving it here for a single product or a single uh, unit here, or single product here. We're only looking at one product here. Okay, so P equals our unit sales price. X equals the number of units that we're going to be solving for here. V equals a unit variable cost. Again, based on a one unit here, quantity of one here. TFC here, and I got everything color coded here. TFC would equal our total fixed cost. TVC here, total variable cost. TR and S here, that's our total revenue or our sales. And then TC, that's our total cost. That would be both the fixed and variable portions here. And then TCM, total that equals our total contribution margin. And then R here, that's going to be a percentage or a rate of return here on sales. So that's going to be our key uh, item that we're going to be looking at here when we're solving for our break-even quantities here. Okay, so then T equals our tax rate. And then I NIBT here, net income before taxes. NIAT here, net income here after taxes. Okay, so now let's go back and let's uh, solve for our, our break-even quantities here. So what we're going to be looking at here, uh, first off, let's just understand the cost, volume, profit, the basic concept that we're going to be looking at here. So that's where your total revenues here equals your total cost plus whatever profits you're looking at. Okay, so going through our reference key here. So for our total revenues, TR here equals TC, total cost, plus net income here before taxes. We're going to start out with our net income here before taxes. And then TR here equals TC, which is our total fixed cost, plus our total variable cost. And then just our net income here before taxes. Now we can rearrange our equation here. So we're going to take this TVC total variable cost and move it to the other side of the equation here. So uh, TR here minus TVC total variable cost, move it to the other side of the equation here, equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes. And then if we can further look at it in this terms here, so our total contribution margin is really our total variable cost, uh, difference between our total variable cost and our total uh, excuse me, our total revenues here and our total variable cost. That difference gives us our total contribution margin. Okay, so and then our total contribution margin is equal to total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes. Okay, so now for our calculations for solving for our break-even point here. So we would start with our total revenues here is going to equal our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost, plus some targeted net income here before taxes. So that came off our concept here that we were looking at. So now what we can do here, we can take our total revenues here. That's going to equal the uh, individual price here for, the, uh, for our product times the quantity that we're going to be selling here, that product. So P price times some quantity here is going to equal our total fixed cost here. Now our total variable cost is the variable cost here on a per unit basis times the quantity here that we're solving for our break-even quantity. So P times uh, price times some quantity here equals our fixed total fixed cost plus our total variable cost, which is V, our variable cost on a per unit basis times the quantity we're solving for. So we add that and then we add to it our net income here before taxes. So now we can take and we can rearrange we can rearrange the equa equation here. We can take our variable cost here, our total variable cost Vx here and move it to the other side of the equation. So let's do that. So Px minus our variable cost here, Vx total variable cost equals our total fixed cost here plus our net income here before taxes. And now we can factor out X here from our 
price and our uh, variable cost per unit basis. So the difference between our unit price and our unit variable cost, that difference times X here equals our total fixed cost plus our net income here before taxes. So now we can solve for X. Just divide both sides of the equation here by uh, P unit price minus the variable unit cost here. You divide it out here and eat both sides. So X here, uh, this dividing both sides of the equation by that amount. So it cancels out here on this side of the equation and then we end up with our total fixed cost here plus our net income here before taxes equals our P unit price versus our unit variable cost. So that is solving 4x here based on our net income here before taxes. But we have to solve for it based on a rate of return here on sales. And what we're going to do, our net income here before taxes, we're just going to take this equation we're going to substitute in here that rate of return here times our sales. Our sales would be our total price here, unit price times that quantity that we're solving for here. Okay, so let's see how the rationale for getting down to our uh, net income here, substituting of that uh, rate here times uh, sales or our total revenues here. Okay, so let's go down and look at it. So R here is the desired percentage or the rate of return on sales that we're solving for here. So we're going to substitute R times our total revenues here, P times X, unit price times the quantity here for it for the desired in net income here before taxes. So TR here is equal equal our sales, total sales here, and that equals the uh, unit price here times X, the total units we're going to be looking at. So unit price times the quantity here. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. So our our rate of return here on sales is simply taking our net income here before taxes, dividing it by our total revenues here. And that's really looking at the same here, our net income before taxes, dividing it by our sales here. So now we can further break this down here. So R equals our net income, our rate of return, rate that we're looking at here, net income here before taxes. And for our sales is our unit price here times the quantity that we're solving for here. Quantity Price times our quantity, that we can substitute in here for our sales. So now our net income here before taxes is going to be this this rate that we're solving for the rate of return here on sales times our total sales here p times x and then we'll further look at this rate we're looking at net income here after taxes divided by our sales same situation here so what we've done here the r here is a percentage of our sales rate of return here is a percentage of our sales so now we can this is how we got that uh, and we substitute that net income here before taxes equals the rate here times sales here. So that moving back up to our equation here, that's how we got it here using that rationale out. So X here for looking at our first looking at it in terms of our unit sales here based on a percentage of sales that net income here before taxes based on a percentage of sales. We just substitute that at R times PX here price times quantity and that Total fixed cost plus our rate here times our uh, price times quantity or sales here divided by uh, the unit amount here. Difference between our price here and our variable cost on a per unit basis. All right, so that's how we got to our rationale here. We just at NABT here, we substituted in the rate times our sales here. Okay, so that's our rationale here. So now let's go in, let's look at solving uh, this uh, stated as a percentage of sales here based on our net income here after taxes. So if you look at it in these terms, the net income here after taxes is just taking your net income here before taxes and times one minus the tax rate. So that's how we get to our net income after taxes here. So uh, solving for our net income here before taxes it's just uh, divide both sides here by one minus the tax rate. So you get your net income here after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate here. So we can substitute that into our formula that we solve for here for X. So total fixed cost plus net income here before taxes divided by the difference between a price and variable cost here. So all we're doing here is we're going to substitute uh, this net income here after taxes in that were net income here before taxes equal the net income here after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate. We just substitute that in here. So we get X here would be a total fixed cost plus 
net income here after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate and that total quantity here divided by price unit price versus subtract a difference between unit price and our unit variable cost here okay so that's how we got from uh from our net income here before taxes to net income here after taxes solving for our quantities here through that substitution. Now we can further do another substitution here. So we said, if we say one minus the tax rate here times net income here before taxes equals our rate here times our total sales here, PX. So just solving for our net income here before taxes equals our rate here times total sales here, P price times a quantity here divided by one minus T here. Just made that substitution in here for NAIA. So just going back to that rationale, we could uh, just substitute what we calculated here, just put it into back into our equation here for uh, determining at a net income here after taxes as a percentage of sales, solving for that quantity. Again, just taking our total fixed cost here plus what we sell for over here. So for a net income after, uh, net, total net income here before taxes, we solve for it in terms of our rate here times our uh, total sales here. Just substitute that in here. What we had substituted here before for net income before taxes, now all we're doing is substituting it in here based on our rate here times our total sales here. T total, so quantity here as a percentage of sales for net income here after taxes, total fixed cost, and taking that plus our quantity here that we have divided by our total uh, ver difference between our unit price here and our unit variable cost here. So that's how we got to our, as a percentage of sales here to determine both uh, net income here before taxes and based on as a percentage of sales here and net income here after taxes as a percentage of sales. Okay, so we have went through our, the general equation here and our general formula. So let's just go down and look at it in terms of our cost, volume, profit graph here. Okay, just laying it out here in general terms here. Uh, unit quantity or our units here along our x-axis, our dollar amounts here along our y-axis here. So what we have here, our fixed cost, constant line here, we have some fixed cost, total fixed cost. Then we add to it our variable cost, that would be the variable unit cost times whatever quantity we solve for here. So our total cost includes a fixed cost, constant amount here, plus our increasing rate here at our variable amount. So that represents our total cost here. So our total cost is our total variable cost here that we have, plus our total fixed cost here. And then our total revenues line, that was, we started out here at some zero amount with X units, zero units sold here. And it increases here at the rate here of uh, price, at the unit price here times the quantity we're solving for here. So price times our quantity, unit quantity, our quantities here equals our total revenue. That's just P times X here. And then the contribution margin is this difference between total revenue here and our total variable cost here. But for our break even point here, this is just where our total revenues here intersects with our total cost. At one point, they have to be equal here. So there's no profit made at this point here. This is our break-even point. Anything below that, we're operating at a loss. Anything above it, we have some profit here. So just looking at our profit line here, the key is it just I've got a below not shown in blue here, net income before taxes, and then dotted in green here, net income here after taxes. So if we solve for, gone back to our equation here that we look at, net income before taxes here would be minus the total fixed cost plus the quantity here, the difference between our purchase price or our unit price and our variable unit cost times that quantity we have here. So that's going to be our net income here before taxes. Any point on that line you can substitute in for X here to, it, it, to, based on our net income here before taxes. But what we're doing here in this case for our net income here before taxes and net income here after taxes, we're just substituting at that rate times our quantity here. here substitute that in here. So rate times some, uh, rate here substitute, it should be some uh, purchase quantity here. It should be a quantity in here as well. PX, I didn't show the PX in here, but it should have been a PX here, price times some quantity here, substitute that in. And then the net income here after taxes is just one minus the tax rate times that total quantity mi uh, of minus the total fixed cost plus the difference between your unit price and your variable cost times the quantity here. 
net income here after taxes. And if you're looking at your break-even point or as far as what you, where they intersect your y-axis here, of course, we could fix our total fixed cost. We started out here with a fixed cost and built it up to our variable cost. And then based on our break-even points here, break-even quantities here, that would be whatever we have our unit price here times whatever quantity that was here. And move it down to our net income here before taxes and net income here after taxes. Uh, before, Based on our net income here after taxes, it would be one minus the tax rate times minus the total fixed cost here. And then for our net income here before taxes would just be minus the total fixed cost here. That's at x equal to zero. Okay, so we've gone through our basic equations here and our cost volume profit graph here to look at uh, the, our what we needed here as a percentage of sales here for our target on net income here before and net income here after taxes.